Good afternoon, my name is Sarah and today I'll be informing you on the process of how a washing machine works. This information is important for people to know because it is so common in everyday lives. I can almost guarantee that 90% of consumers have a washing machine and use them on a regular basis, except most of them probably haven't read their owner's manuals to learn about proper care and maintenance of their machine. My purpose today is to inform you of the structure of a washing machine, how it works, and finally to go over some best practices of using the washing machine. In order to fully understand the process and use of the washing machine, we must first know how it is structured. There are two common types of washing machines. There are top load washers and front load washers. While both have their perks, top load washers are generally purchased because they are cheaper, while front load washers are purchased because they are more energy and water efficient. From the consumer perspective, the inside of the washing machine is a metal basket where they put their clothing, sometimes containing an agitator through the middle of the basket. This metal basket is fitted inside of a plastic tub, and this allows the basket to spin independently with the help of a motor while the tub stays still. Water flows through a valve above the tub and exits through the bottom with the help of a drain pump. The basket is suspended on four long metal rods, and these rods are about two feet long and have large springs on the end. The rods support the weight of the tub, clothing, and water while providing an effective noise dampening system. As the basket agitates and spins, the springs absorb the shock and provide the consumer a quieter wash cycle. Front load washing machines run very similarly. The basket is turned on its side and water flows in from the top of the unit. It is supported by two large springs at the top while also sitting on shocks. These shocks absorb the impact of the noise much like the rods on the top load washing machine. The last part of the washing machine that is important to understand is how the motor works. The motor usually only spins in one direction and connects directly to the metal basket inside the machine as well as the agitator found inside the basket. The motor is able to spin the agitator on its own but uses another piece to attach the part to the basket so that at time the entire basket spins as one consecutive piece. Now that you know how they're built, it is easy to understand how the washer washes the clothing. This process starts assuming you have already put clothing and soap in the washer and have just pressed start. First, the washer will drain any leftover residual water from the tub. This tub will then fill with water. Some machines utilize a special technology to know how much water is needed to wash the clothing based on weight. Other machines will fill to a consumer selected level. After the tub is full, the motor will start to turn the agitator. The agitator will cause friction between the clothing to help break the dirt particles loose and release them into the water. The soap will attract the dirt and trap it. After this, the washer will drain and quickly spin to wring out excess water from the clothing. It will fill again with water and rinse them one to three times. This ensures that all of the soap and dirt particles are out of the clothing and carried to the bottom of the tub. The spin cycle will initiate after final rinse. It will spin rapidly to wring most of the excess water out of the clothing. This helps the dryer run more efficiently. The most common issue that washing machines have is becoming out of balance. This means that clothing is shifted to one side of the basket and causes the basket to spin unevenly. Common symptoms of this issue include loud uneven thumping noise and damage to the machine. If you hear your machine making any loud abnormal noise, stop the machine and shift the clothes around. This should rebalance the load and enable it to spin smoothly. If you hear your machine doing this often, then you may want to adjust the load size. A unit too full or too empty can easily become out of balance. With the rest of my time, I'd like to go over some best practices for, what, for maintenance on the washing machine. If your washer has a self-clean cycle, you should be running this every four months for standard use, more often if you do a lot of laundry. If the washer does not have a self-clean cycle, it is beneficial to run two to three hot cycles with no soap in that same four month period. Most soaps contain a paraffin wax, which after drying can build up on the washer and stain clothing during future uses. While on the topic of soap, don't be alarmed if the water in the washer doesn't look soapy. Remember, the clothes are not cleaned by the soap, but by the friction of the clothing moving against itself. High efficiency washers use less water, and if you have an HE washer, you're going to want to purchase HE soap. 
HE soap does not create suds like normal detergents, and too much suds in an HE washer can actually lead to leaks and damage to the unit. I hope I've been able to help you understand the inner workings of your washing machine, and to conclude, the process of the washing machine is to fill with water, agitate the clothing, drain, rinse, and spin. Make sure to complete general maintenance on the unit and don't use too much soap. Oh, and don't worry about dryers. Those are much more simple. Clean the lint trap, use a time dry on a large load, and everything should be good to go.